Hello Booktube and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Marilyn and welcome. Last month I did my first original readathon, the Phenomenal Woman Maya Angelou <laughs> event and I'm still reaping the benefits of that um, because I'm meeting so many people who are doing the tag that was related to the event and I'm Re watching all their videos and it's so much fun it's really so much fun but um, today I was going to make a response video and I'm still going to do that but I'm going to do it next week um, it's already Friday and I thought I would do a giveaway and a small unhaul I haven't done an unhaul in a long time and usually when people do unhauls they do big unhauls um, I only have two bookshelves, the one in back of me right here and another smaller one, I should say, over here. <laughs> so um, we're having a new addition to the family. My daughter is getting married uh, and we need more room. So uh, I had, since I've been on BookTube four years, I've done a few massive, what I, for, for me, unhauls but this time I'm going to do them little by little um, and uh, but I want to start with the giveaway the giveaway because I only give away new books and I picked up this book Old Bones by Helen Kitson when I first started uh, my channel and let me tell you what it's about in case you're interested in me gifting it to you um, Diana and her sister Antonia and these are older women so when I first started booktube one of my goals was to read more books by when women like me who were older um, so let me go on their house sharing spinsters I don't know if that's a good name anymore spinsters who have never got to who who have never got over their respective first loves. Diana owns a gift shop, but rarely works there. Antonia is unemployed, having lost her teaching job at an all-girls school following a shocking outburst in the classroom after enduring years of torment. Diana is a regular at the local library. Antonia enjoys her nice magazines. Did I say Diana is a regular? And Antonia enjoys her nice magazines and they treat themselves to coffee and cake once a week in the village cafe. I really related to that first part of the blurb. Um, I always had my nice magazines that I treated myself to. The, the glossy ones uh, that are so, so expensive now were always expensive. But anyway, I digress. So um, Naomi, another person, lives alone haunted by the failure of her two marriages. She works in the library, doesn't get on with her younger colleagues, and rarely cooks herself a proper meal. Secretly, she longs for a Bowdoin frock. Now, I would not have known what a Bowdoin frock was until recently when I actually bought a dress for my daughter's wedding that was from Bowdoin. <laughs> so they came to the U.S. and they make usually uh, quite um, lovely prints but the dress I got wasn't a print and uh, so that's I just realized that now so that's extra so it, then it turns when a body is discovered in the local quarry all three women's lives are turned upside down and why Di when Diana's old flame guilt turns up unexpectedly tensions finally spill out and threaten to destroy the outwardly peaceful lives all three women have carefully constructed around themselves. So um, Helen Kitson is the author, and she, it says she takes us back to the fictional Shopshire village of Moorvale in this, her brilliant second novel, which exposes the fragilities and strengths of three remarkably unremarkable elderly women. Now, I enjoyed this. Uh, but it wasn't a keeper for me and I I tell you the truth I read it so long ago I really can't explain why except that maybe it was a little 
convoluted, but maybe that wasn't even it. But anyway, if you're interested in Old Bones by Helen Kitson, drop me, <laughs> tell me in the comments. And if there's more than one person, um, I don't think I can send this to uh, overseas, but I can, um, since it's a book that I think I bought in uh, Blackstones, um, which, so it's an English book, I'm sure that many people, well, I'm not sure, but maybe many people from the US haven't gotten around to reading this. So if you're one of those people, drop me a comment. If there's more than one, I will put it in a hat or a bowl and um, choose someone. So, uh, okay, so that's the giveaway. Now I'm going to uh, show you a few books that I'm unhauling and the reason why. I really like Nemesis by Philip Roth. Um, it, it's, it is kind of a Greek tragedy um, and it's, a, it's regarding the polio outbreak in Newark, which I heard there wasn't really a polio outbreak in that part of Newark at that time, but basically it's taken from real life. So it's set in a Newark neighborhood during a terrifying polio outbreak. And Bucky Cantor is vigorous, dutiful, 23-year-old playground director during the summer of 1944. And uh, he is working as, as, as this playground director when the outbreak of uh, polio comes out. And he's trying to, um, he leads us through every inch of emotion uh, that uh, such a pestilence can breed. And uh, I think we can having gone through COVID, we can relate to this maybe more than when he wrote it. So um, it moves between Newark and uh, a summer camp in the Poconos. And I like this book. I have some problems with Philip Roth, but I will say that he is a marvelous writer. On a sentence level, I love this book, but he kind of messes up the endings in every book that I've read so far, I was disappointed at the ending because everything else is so wonderful throughout. And I, I really, I like this book, but I'm, I don't want to keep it. So, um, you know what? This is not a new book, but I did buy it. <laughs> it looks like a new book. If you want this one, now what did I pay for it? Yeah, I paid three bucks for it. So... I don't think that anybody wants it, but if you do want it, let me know <laughs> because I don't mind sending it. <laughs> uh, the, the next book, I'm sure that people will be surprised at because I did love it and it's a nice addition. It's Willa Cather's O Pioneers. And what's special about this book? I think it's a Reader's Digest edition. Yes, it is, but it's big and it has illustrations in it. Now, what I loved about it and is when I opened it, there was a picture of a little girl. I shouldn't even show you her face. A little girl, local girl. And um, I said, wow, that's great. She looks to be about fourth grade. And they're teaching this book uh, to young people, which is really good. Um, I don't know if you've read Old Pioneers or anything about Willa Cather, uh, but she was a wonderful writer uh, depicting the pioneer experience in the US. So um, again, if you want this book, let me know, because it is just too big uh, for me to keep right now and keep it on my, um, on my, I, I just wanted to show you, there is a wonderful illustrations throughout the book. So, uh, I mean, I can send all of these books by book rate mail, so I don't mind if you want it. If, if this uh, tickles your fancy and you've heard about it on BookTube, and I'm sure you have, um, just drop me a comment. The next one you don't want, uh, <laughs> it, not because of the, the book, the title, uh, it's Elizabeth Gaspel's Cranford, which would be great. Um, for Victober next month. And I read it in this Dover edition, which I was, I, I had really ranted about 
how I hated this edition, that it's the font was so small. There was uh, the new chapters started um, in the middle of a book. So I'm going to unhaul it to my library and get a nice copy of it of of Cranford because it's it's amazing how the experience of reading a book uh, can make it better or worse. In this case, I really was so mad at the font that I didn't enjoy it, and maybe I'm going to find another way of reading it for Victober. Uh, the next book is another new book that I bought. Um, and it's called 365 Thank Yous, The Year a Simple Act of Daily Gratitude Changed My Life by John Kralik. And I tried to give this away and no one wanted it. And it's a really good book. It really is. Um, it might be a little uh, sappy in some parts, but uh, it's an inspiring true story about a simple old fashioned act writing thank you notes led a hopeless, angry, middle-aged man out of despair and into a wonderful life. I didn't think he was that hopeless, actually. He was very, uh, maybe that's why I didn't relate to him. He was, he was uh, um, very successful and rich, and he has uh, a girlfriend uh, who seems to be, he seems to have a really good life. But um, I like the idea of thank you notes. Uh, I really do. So if you're interested in this book for the second time, I will send it to you. And that's my little, I guess my giveaway, my unhaul turned into a giveaway. And I don't mind at all. I mean, everyone here has been so wonderful to me since I joined four years ago. And I, I wanted to come on here on a Friday uh, for a Friday Reads. I just, like I said, I just finished uh, doing an event and after doing the event I read the whole every autobiography that was in that big book that I had showed you of Maya Angelou and there's a little bit of a hangover there when you finish such a, uh, an amazing almost historical not almost historical book of of so many things of African Americans of Africa of of just being a human woman in in life <laughs> so um yeah so it was a lot and i have to really um digest a little bit and i have a lot of shorty september books that i'm reading but i wanted to come on here just to say i'm okay <laughs> and uh i plan to, like i said to do uh a response video that's going around lately I won't go into it because I'm sure you if you're part of the community you know what I mean uh, you know what I'm talking about but um, I am so happy this month because so many good things have been happening to me and in my 74th year I never thought I would be this vibrant and able to have a booktube channel so anyway, this was meant to be a short video, and I will be back with my response video and also what I've been reading. So until then, I wish everyone a wonderful weekend, and until we meet again, as usual, aloha.